We are told incessantly by Muhammad's followers that the Quran that we have at hand is exactly the same as that allegedly revealed to him 1400 years ago. How accurate are these statements? It is very unfortunate but essential that we repeat the same statement again and again and again that invariably Muhammadan Muslims invent and concoct unsubstantiated stories about Muhammad and his Quran, thus requiring them to create more lies to cover the earlier ones, especially since their falsehoods contradict the very exegetical Muhammadan sources in the Arabic language that prove otherwise. In our series, we might touch upon many similar subjects under different headings because they overlap and it gives our listeners different facets of our research. The stoning verse is called in Arabic, Ayat al-Rajm. Hadith Muslim maintains that key passages were missing from Zayd bin Thabit's collection of the Quran. The most famous is the verse of stoning. All the major traditions speak of this missing verse. According to Ibn Ishaq's version, page 684, we read, Allah sent Muhammad and sent down the scripture to him. Part of what he sent down was the passage on stoning. Omar ibn al-Khattab asserts, We read it, we were taught it, and we heeded it. The Apostle Muhammad stoned, and we stoned after him. I fear that in time to come, men will say that they find no mention of stoning in Allah's book, and thereby go astray in neglecting an ordinance which Allah has sent down. Verily, stoning in the book of Allah is a penalty laid on married men and women who commit adultery. Therefore, According to Umar ibn Khattab, the stoning verse was part of the original Qur'an, the revelation which Allah allegedly sent down. But now, it is missing from the Qur'an. In many of the traditions, we find numerous reports of adulterous men and women who were stoned by Muhammad and his companions. Yet we read in today's Qur'an, Al-Nur 24.2, The woman and the man guilty of adultery or fornication flog each of them with a hundred lashes. Let not compassion move you in their case in a matter prescribed by Allah if you believe in Allah and the last day. And let a party of the believers witness their punishment. Omar said, adultery was not only a capital offense, but one which demanded stoning. This verse is now missing from the Quran, and that is why Omar raised this issue. Believers need to ask themselves whether indeed their Quran can be claimed to be the same as that passed down by Muhammad to his companions. With evidence such as this here addressed, as well as of hundreds of other discrepancies, the Quran in our possession today becomes all the more suspect. Sahih Muslim Hadith 4191, narrated by Ubadah ibn Samit. Allah Messenger said, When an unmarried male commits adultery with an unmarried female, they should receive 100 lashes and banishment for one year. And in the case of married male committing adultery with a married female, they shall receive 100 lashes and be stoned to death. Al-Muwatta Hadith 41.1 Malik related to me from Nafi that Abdullah ibn Umar said, The Jews came to the Messenger of Allah and mentioned to him that a man and a woman from among them had committed adultery. So the Messenger of Allah gave the order and they were stoned. Abdullah ibn Umar added, I saw the man leaning over the woman to protect her from the stones. Sunan Abu Dawood Hadith 4443, narrated by al numan ibn Bashir. Habib ibn Salim said, A man called Abdul Rahman bin Hunyan had intercourse with his wife's slave girl. The matter was brought to al numan bin Bashir, who was the governor of Kufa. He said, I shall decide between you in accordance with the decision of the Apostle of Allah. If she made her lawful for you, I shall flog you 100 lashes. If she did not make her lawful for you, I shall stone you to death. So they found that she had made her lawful for him. He therefore flogged him 100 lashes. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 5.188 narrated by Amr bin Maymun. During the pre-Islamic period of ignorance, I saw a she-monkey surrounded by a number of monkeys. They were all stoning it because it had committed illegal sexual intercourse. I, too, stoned it along with them. Believers and unbelievers, this hadith is a real gem, and I cannot understand how Bukhari actually included it among the Sahih traditions. 
Even the monkeys had knowledge of the stoning verse before Muhammad's Quran and applied it amongst themselves. They must have obviously learned about it from a divine revelation similar to the ones that were descending upon Muhammad. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 8.804 narrated by al shaybani I asked Abdullah bin Abi Awfa, did Allah's apostle carry out the rajim penalty, i.e. the stoning to death? He said yes. I said, was it before the revelation of Surah An-Nur or after it? He replied, I don't know. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 8.806 narrated by Abu Huraira. A man came to Allah's apostle while he was in the mosque and he called him saying, O oh Allah's apostle, I have committed illegal sexual intercourse. The Prophet turned his face to the other side. But that man repeated his statement four times. And after he bore witness against himself four times, the Prophet called him saying, Are you mad? The man said no. The Prophet said, Are you married? The man said yes. Then the Prophet said, Take him away and stone him to death. Jabir bin Abdullah continued, I was among the ones who participated in stoning him, and we stoned him at the Musalla. When the stones troubled him, he fled, but we overtook him at the Harra and stoned him to death. All the above reports and many, many more indicate that there was the verse of Rajim as part of the Quran, but is not in the Uthmanic and current Qurans. The most extraordinary fact is that it is Umar ibn Khattab, one of the most intimate of Muhammad's companions, and also the second Khalifa of Islam, who is asserting that the stoning verse existed and does not exist in Uthman's Quran. Any intelligent and independently inquiring mind would raise the following points. Why is the stoning verse missing from Uthman's Quran? Umar is not the only one asserting the previous existence of this verse. We have also shown that the numerous other verses are missing from Uthman's edited version of the Quran. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have repeatedly demonstrated, based entirely upon the Muhammadan records themselves, that many others attest to Umar's assertion that Muhammad stoned those who committed adultery without any basis in the Quran. Furthermore, how many other verses are missing because the Huffaz, the memorizers, who heard them from Muhammad, died in the Muslim slaughters after his death? How can even a single revelation from Allah be missing from the Quran? if Allah is the same as the God of Israel and Jesus? Why does the Sunnah overrule the Quran? Can any follower of Muhammad explain these incredibly disturbing facts in a rational manner? Personally, I have absolutely no doubt that no one can.